Hi, I'm Bon Anjali Palamike, CPA, and welcome to my channel. Hi guys, so today, chapter uh, 10 na tayo for the revenue recognition for construction contracts. So today, discuss natin kung paano yung revenue recognition pagdating sa mga uh, companies na nagkakaroon ng mga construction or in-engage sila sa mga construction contracts. Okay. So for revenue recognition, generally the companies recognize revenue at the point of sale. So kung compare natin dun sa normal, kumbaga di ba kunyari, nagbenta ka, merchandising company ka. Nung nagbenta ka, dun ka magkakaroon ng revenue. Di ba? Under the accrual basis. Kung kailan uh, nabigay mo na yung service or nabigay mo na yung goods, dun yun, sa point of sale. Pero dito tayo magkakaroon ng iba. Kapag uh, construction contracts. Kasi imagine mo, pag nag-construct ka na isang building, hindi naman yan na uh, mabilis. Eh, diba? Usually, it takes uh, more than a year before siya makonstruct totally. So, doon pumapasok yung overtime or percentage of completion na revenue recognition. Kasi, um, tawag dito, there are circumstances na pwede naman na palang mag-recognize ng revenue over time, even though the uh, project or the construction is not yet fully completed. Unlike with the usual na pagbebenta natin, kumbaga, uh, kahit na ginagawa mo pa lang, pero uh, dito, hindi mo pa nabibigay, is dun pa sa point in time ka mag-recognize. So may two types kasi tayo ng revenue recognition. May tinatawag time point in time, which is ito yung usual na ginagamit natin. And pagdating sa construction is may tinatawag tayong overtime or percentage of uh, completion. So under certain situations, companies may recognize revenue over time. Pero uh, usually ito nga, ginagamit siya for long-term construction contract accounting. Okay. So paano nangyayari? Kailan ina-apply ang overtime or percentage of completion na revenue recognition? First, kumbaga, may tatlong... Uh, items dito na either of these three is ma mangyari, pwede nang magkaroon ng overtime na re revenue recognition. First is if the customer consumes the benefit. So, kumbaga, nagagamit na nung pinagbila mo. Imagine mo, nagbibuild ka ng building. And yung mga partial na nagawa mo na is nagagamit naman na nila and accessible na sa kanila. So, technically, para ka na rin nagpasa ng uh, service mo or nung goods mo, di ba? So, with that, pwede ka na mag-recognize ng uh, revenue over time or habang ginagawa pa kasi kinukonsume niya na. Next, na customer control. So, obviously, kung yun nga nakokonsume, eto rin nakokontrol. So, pag nakokontrol niya na yung asset, yung customer na nagpagawa sa'yo ng building or nagpagawa sa'yo ng something na kailangan i-construct, kapag nakokontrol niya na, so, it is good as uh, overtime or percentage of completion na yung revenue recognition. Hindi mo na kailangan 100% matapos before masabing revenue ko na to. Third, kapag si seller, ikaw naman, ikaw yung construction company, eh, wala ka namang ibang alternative na paggagamitan na itong ginagawa mo and surely kay seller, kay buyer talaga mapupunta to. So, when there is no alternative, it can also pass as uh, criteria for overtime recognition ng construction revenue. So, kung may kita nyo, di ba, parang yung two types ng revenue recognition, ito, lagi natin ginagamit si point in time. Si overtime is ginagamit lang siya for certain uh, scenarios such as for the long-term construction contracts and it should fall within these three criteria, criteria. Okay, next. Construction contract. So, syempre, kapag nagkaroon sila ng engagement about the construction, gagawa sila ng construction contract. So, may two types ng construction contract. First is the fixed price. Next is the cost plus. Si fixed price is, let's say, before tayo mag-start, sabi, o oh, sige, gawin mo tong buong condominium na to for uh, 20 million. Let's say, ganun. So, regardless ng mga pinagdaanan na cost ni contractor, is yun na yung babayaran ko sa kanya. Plus, minus na lang ng mga cost escalation clauses. So, depende dun sa agreement nila, minsan sabihin na, na, sige, pero kapag may pinadagdag kayong gagawin, 
iba na yan, ah, labas na yan dyan. Or kapag meron kami in-inquire na um, additional na dahil sa inyo, basta something na napag-agrihan nila beforehand. So, they can add it in the fixed cost or fixed price contract. Si cost plus contract naman, ito naman is si contractor, babayaran siya ng total cost. So, nakabay siya dun sa cost. Kaya nga, cost plus. So, nyari, um, after ko constructing yung building, so, dapat may supports kung magkano yung gasos mo. So, gumasos ako ng mga 15 million. Yun yung totoo kong cost. Siyempre, dapat totoo and i-validate din ni uh, magbabayad. Siyempre, before niya bayarin yung cost plus contract, dapat na-sure mo na yun lang, yan talaga yung mga cost na ginamit. So, sabi, kunyari well, yun, napag-agrihan nila. Sige, any uh, cost, lalagyan ko ng 10%. Sa ina yung 10%, parang gano'n. So, cost plus contract is contractor is reimbursed for allowable or otherwise defined cost plus a percentage of this cost or a fixed fee. Pwede rin namang cost plus ganitong amount, di ba? Kasi in this way, um, si contractor, ano siya tayo dito? Sure siya, nakikita siya dito kasi yung total cost, mag-reimburse sa kanya tapos dadagdagan pa ng certain fee. Si fixed price, Kumbaga, siyempre, kapag ganyan, medyo titi pa rin mo. Kung ikaw si contractor, ito yun, iniingatan mo rin yung kita mo, sasadyain mo na hanggang dito. So, depende na lang sa usapan nila. Pero ito yung two types of construction contracts. Okay. Construction revenue. So, siyempre, accounting base. So, ibig sabihin, gumawa na sila ng kontrata na nag a sila na si contractor, gagawa siya. So, si, um, si contractor, siya yung magre-recognize ng construction revenue. So, the total amount of consideration receivable under the contract. Kasi di ba ang recording natin kapag revenue is debit, receivable, and credit revenue. So, technically, lahat nung napag-usapan yung receivable mo, yun din yung revenue mo. So, in the early stages of a contract, it is often an estimate. So, technically, um, sabi nga natin, ang construction revenue, gumagalaw-galaw yung balance niya kasi point in time siya. So, hindi agad yung fix na amount kahit kang fix cost na ano eh na construction contract is nagkakaroon pa ng changes sabi natin depending on the later on may discuss ako na iba't ibang nagpapa-change sa revenue so usually estimate and gumagalaw-galaw ang balance ng construction revenue and it may alter where it is possible to make claim so ito sabi natin pwede siyang gumalaw or pwede siyang mag-change kapag mayroong mga claims against a customer or third party for costs that were not originally include, included in the contract. Kumbaga, lugi ka naman kasi kung may mga kakaiba kang ginastos na hindi nyo naman talaga napag-usapan. Next, contract revenue is comprised of the initial amount, yung syempre doon tayo sa pinag-usapan nyo, plus the any variations. So, i-discuss ko later what is variations in the contract work and claims to the extent that is probable and capable to be reliably measured. Okay, so next is variation. So, ano ba itong tinasabi kong variation? So, variations are, uh, variations are the instruction with the customer for a change in the scope of the work to be performed under the contract. So, yung example natin na napapagawa ng uh, condominium. So, ito si customer, kaya ito mayaman siya. Sabi ko, pagawa ako ng building ah, tapos, during the construction, hindi ginagawa na niya, bigla niya sinabi na, ay, lagyan mo pala ito ng tulay. Ha? Gusto ko kasi ito, kunyari yung bahay niya. Building din. Tapos, eh, gumagawa siyang condominium. Gusto ko gawa mo ng tulay dito. So, it is something that is not originally planned. Something that was not originally agreed by the parties. But, uh, additionally requested by the customer. So, when the customer requests for something na additional that was not originally agreed, it is called variation. So, yung mga variations, ito yung additional scope of work or pwede rin pabawas naman, hindi lagi padagdag. Meron tayong pa-add and pabawas. Meron din na dati sabi niya, o oh, sige yung condo, gawin mong 50 floors ha. Tapos during the construction, sabi, ay sige, ano na lang, 40 na lang pala na floors. So, pag ganun, may deductive variations din tayong tinatawag. So, due to the instruction during the phase of the construction, is pinabawasan niya or pinadagdagan niya yung something na hindi naman nila napag-usapan beforehand. It is called variations. Okay. Next is incentive payment. So, pwedeng gumalaw yung revenue due to the variations, due to the incentive payments, and due to the claim. So, what is incentive payment? So, incentive payments are additional payments. So, incentive na, di ba? Parang si contractor, parang 
uh, yung tuwa niya, sobrang natuwa siya doon sa ginawa ni, uh, si customer nagawa siya, natuwa siya sa ginawang kondo ni contractor. So, pwede siyang mabigay ng incentive payment. So, ganun yun. So, pwede nga additional revenue sa point of view ni contractor. Next is claims. So, si contractor, pwede siyang mag-sabi uh, na, ay, may mga gusto kong ipareembrace pa na claims bukod dito sa uh, napag-usapan natin. So, these are the amounts that the contractor seeks to collect from the customer or another party as reimbursement for cost not included in the contract price. So, mga additional na uh, cost na gusto niyang ipadagdag. So, yung claim may arise from uh, example, yung uh, delays caused by the customer. Kumbaga, kunyari may existing manpower na gumagawa ng kondo tapos biglang uh, ang tagal magsagot ni client kung Anong design po ba dito sa bandan dito? Kunyari, hindi pinag-uusapan nila. Tapos, during the construction, ang tagal. To the point na, uh, kumbaga, nade-delay din sila. Nade-delay na yung construction due to the customer. So, you can ask for claims na parang uh, dahil sa inyo, nagbabayad kami ng labor sa mga tao. Wala na silang ginagawa kasi ang tagal yung mag-decide or ang tagal yung mag-approve. Kasi usually sa construction, um, uh, ano siya eh, cons consistent na communication between the Uh, customer and the project na gumagawa or yung mga contractors. So, minsan, during the construction, may mga kailangan silang ipa-approve or ipa-confirm kung okay na ba to, etc. And kapag na-delay sila, si customer sa pagsagot, it can be charged as claims. Next, errors and specification or design. So, may iba't ibang construction na uh, napag-usapan. Pwedeng si contra contractor mismo yung gagawa ng design or pwedeng Si customer, nagbigay na siya, ito yung design na gusto ko dun sa condo ko. So, pwedeng maging claims. For example, kapag may error dun na parang, kunyari parang, ito yung pinapagawa niyong design, pero may error dun sa specification like mali-mali naman pala yung sukat or hindi naman pala siya feasible gawin, mga ganun bagay. And disputes in the variations in contract work. So, kapag may mga um, additional cost silang na incur Okay, so yan yung mga dahilan kung bakit yung construction revenue pwede pa rin mag-move. Okay. Next, construction cost. So kung may revenue, may cost din tayo. So sabi sa PFRS 15, which governs the uh, revenue, incremental cost of obtaining a contract and cost of fulfilling a contract should be included in the construction cost. So the capitalized cost, will be amortized as revenue is recognized. Kumbaga, bukod dun sa actual cost na ginamit nyo, may mga kinakapitalize kayo, such as yung cost nung pag-fulfill ng contract and other incremental cost. And itong mga kinapitalize na cost na to is ina-amortize daw over the, uh, kapag nare-recognize yung uh, revenue natin. The capitalized cost will be amortized. This means that they will be expensed to cost to the construction as the con contract progresses. So, ang laman ng construction cost, ito yung mga cost na directly attributable to the contract, cost that um, in general can be allocated, and cost that are specifically chargeable to the customer in the terms of the contract. Okay, so ano yung cost na directly specific contract? So usually andun yung mga site labor cost, yung mga site supervision, tapos yung cost ng materials na ginamit, depreciation ng PPE na ginamit, yung cost ng um, hiring plant and equipment, di ba? Cost of design and technological advances and etc. So yun yung mga cost. So kumbaga ngayon na capture natin, na understand natin kumbaga kailan nangyayari tong uh, percentage of completion. Ano yung mga laman ng revenue and uh, bakit siya gumagalaw-galaw? What are variations, incentive claims, and what should be included in construction cost? So for the next video, so I'll release another video discussing uh, other considerations and sample problems na tayo for the revenue ng ating construction. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.